items out of uh, all the 15 rounds they have here. But it is going to be phase starting on the T side. And now Godson on, some people might say, the more favorable side. We do have the uh, smoke, nade, and a flash by purchase a crystal. No kits on the side of Godson. That's interesting because for phase, they have a lot of utility. They have Colter and Nico, the uh, the two stars of the team with the smoke, a couple of flashbangs, a Molotov, and an extra smoke as well. And they're going to be coming and charging in. It's going to be Sticko opening things up at a push from Rain and Vimas. They're going to find a couple of kills real quick. And they're just going to continue exactly where they left off on Nuke. Very high pace, super aggressive, getting the bomb down within the first 25 seconds of the round. And now, as you said, it is a three versus four retake coming in from Gatsen. And as you pointed out, there is no kit available, not at the moment, at least. Crystal with a smoke and a flash, maybe it can give them some cover, much needed. BMS in a good position here, though, with the clock. If he can find the first kill, that should be it. Rain gets it towards Maiden, and I think this is going to be it. This retake looks highly unlikely to happen for Guards and Rain. Finds another one with the USP, and he finishes it off with Cold Sierra now. Face Clan again, exactly as we were talking about, picking it up where they left it on Nuke. Super high pace, super aggressive, and a nice push in towards this big bomb site. Yeah, this, this is different aggression though, right, Pimp? I mean, if you look at Nuke, that was more like just running in, hoping to get the trades going their way. This was much more methodical. They had a game plan in mind. It was fast, but it there was a, a plan behind it. And for Godsend, they're going to be feeling, feeling a little frustrated with that. Even the retake, they need to make uh, make it a little bit more quicker because they didn't have the kit. And of course, they got picked apart there one by one. Force by coming in for the side of Godsend. They got a few nades in the hands of Madden, Zen, and Crystal. Sticko with the uh, with the scout and the nade in turn from FaZe doing so much damage in the Crystal and Zen. You see the, the uh, three stack from Godsend right now. They have placed three players towards the B side, but uh, as time does slowly start to whittle away, we might see Zen slowly falling back, but no. He's going to be sticking on around. We just see four players of FaZe slowly make the five players inching their way towards B, and they're just going to be going for the hit here, Pen. Yeah, that is quite questionable, but I guess you have to follow through with it. Bimas, Rain finding one each, and what was looking a bit dangerous for Face Clan all of a sudden looks like it's a walk in the park, a five a versus three bomb down. It should be relatively easy for Face Clan to shut down this round. Now, I do agree with you, it's just blindly going into the bomb side. Again, if you're looking at Counter Strike, if you're comparing a Face Clan to an Astralis, for example, you can just see the difference in approach. Face Clan taking risk, taking gambles, but getting away with it because they have such strong individual players. Neither is necessarily right or wrong, dare I say, right? It's just two different ways of approaching Counter-Strike and two different ways mm -hmm. at looking at Counter-Strike. And that's cool to see that some of the top teams out there are not all trying to copy each other. Face Clan playing super aggressive, taking big risks, but also getting the big dollar out of it when it works out. 2-0 for them and a strong start to this game as well. Yeah, the, the only complaint I believe we all had about that, uh, about the T-Side of Nuke was the fact that, well, they were running in and doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting things to change. And as we all know, that is the definition of insanity. But here it's different. Here, you know, it's in front, it plays out differently. And I like this one phrase. It's kind of like a, a, a vulgar display of power showing, trying to intimidate gods and into submission, showing that we are the better team, we have the better individual players, and we will, we will completely dominate you. We will force you to play together. Yeah. And I think that's, a, that's an interesting tactic because Godsend, again, bear in mind, we talk, we've been talking about Bimas as a new player coming in for FaZe, but let's not forget for Farlig, it's his first time in his roster as well. He, he needs to find time to kind of feel comfortable in his lineup, and this could make things troublesome for Godsend, you know? When the pressure mounts, whatever game plan you had in mind trying to take down FaZe, it could potentially fall apart. So I agree with you, Pimp. You know, this style in this map in particular could work out. And here comes a play again, but Sticko, blinded or not, he gets a kill looking for more, but Nico and Rain, they deny him. Farley as well, getting taken out by a grenade of Nico's, and again, Gatsen will have to give up before it even began. There I say, Crystal saving a USB, Maiden saving a Deagle, I believe it is, and at this point, there's nothing they can do to change the outcome of this round. As you were talking about before, the fact that Face Clan is is practicing this new style, I'd, I'd say, especially on a map like Inferno, you know, being so aggressive, being so hyperactive, it's not always a good idea, but when you make it work, it is so frustrating for your opponent. So I can definitely understand why Gatsen already now, just three rounds into the game, maybe is a bit afraid of the fact that Face Clan is playing such a high-paced game. Nevertheless, they're going up 3-0, question is, how many people are they going to survive this round? Nico finds another kill and combines with BMS for the fifth one as well for the round. 
3-0 for FaZe Clan. The money is looking super, super solid. Godsend coming with the first buy round of theirs now. And Nico again, he had a strong map on Nuke and he's starting off super, super strong here on Inferno as well. If I'm Nico right now, I'm feeling super comfortable coming into this half. Oh yeah, he's feeling very good at the moment and that is a scary proposition indeed. We do have, I hear, I heard some text in the chat, Pimp. That could yeah. be a tactical, a technical timeout getting called. So yeah, this round's going to be countered. We're going to be going for a technical timeout. Not too sure what's going on right now. Usually is a team speak issue. That has seems to be have been a problem right now considering it's online Counter-Strike. But Pimp, like going back, you know, a, a number of years and let's talk, that's a time when you used to be playing. Mm. Let's be real. It's been much lesser technical timeouts than we've had in, let's say, 2014 <sighs> to 15. Right. Yeah, it's a joy. Back then, there was a timeout all the time, and I think we, we solved this one quickly as well as we're about to go into the game, but you're definitely right. Back then, we uh, we could easily play a best of three over the course of five or six hours, and that was not always fun to be part of. So good to see that the production team behind this DreamHack tournament is able to solve it relatively quickly. We're back into the game straight away. Face clean up, 3-0, and as I said before, Godsend with the first buy round in the game. Farley on the AWP, has a smoke, has a flashbang, so still a bit of utility to work with. Face clean as well, going for this banana control, and I think that's where we have to see the first fights occur on the banana. Who's gonna win out that battle? Yeah, it's gonna be all about a banana control. I know it's an off coded cliche, so to speak, and a banana control. You've heard it so many times throughout the entire lifetime of Counter-Strike as a franchise, if you ask me, but it's one of the, it's one of the facts, it's one of the, the tenets of Counter-Strike when it comes to this map. It's all about the banana control. And the godsend this time, I like what they're doing. They're keeping the, they're keeping the tees at bay. And interesting, it's gonna be BMAS. A Beamast is going to be the one holding the line to his banana rain. Going to be peeking out, but the double peek comes in from Goth and he finds two, and no trade comes in the way of FaZe. And that's going to force him back towards the B bomb side where Crystal and Madden are holding the line. Now let's see what FaZe Clan has in store for us. There's still a decent amount of utility left. A Beamast with a smoke, the same with Brokey. The two youngsters are going to be the players who's going to smoke up the A bomb side. Switching back and forth with the guns as well. Not really sure, and I think that's, you know, what you saw right there in the, in the game was maybe one of the players unsure of where to aim for the smoke. And again, at this level, it shouldn't happen, but still a new guy into a new team. There's going to be a lot of small nuances in the game that's not going to work out. Nonetheless, CT spawns get smoked. Cold Zero finds the first frag towards Farley. Second frag on Maiden as well as up to Kristen to defend this bomb side. All of a sudden, we have a three versus three. It was looking super solid for Godsend, and now they're forced into a retake scenario. Bomb hasn't gone down just yet. Smoke is about to disappear as well. Cold Zero has to be Fast question is, does he get this bomb plan? He does. Crystal jumping in, goes down to Brumas. I don't know what the hell is going on right now. Brokey with an AWP, has to defend this bomb site, finds the threat to watch oh. And now all he has to do is stay alive, buy some more time if he can. Stuko trying to find him, hiding behind the pillar, and that's gonna be a tough retake. No kid either, Blue. Yeah, Stiko, one of the more tenured players. you almost gets the kill onto Vimas, but broke you with the AWP. He's not missing much right now, is he? 4 0 for FaZe Clan. This is uh, this is where Godsend probably called for a timeout. Ah, look at that me. shot. Look at that shot from Coach Zero. Once again, showing why he was Still. considered to be the best player in the world in the old days. He's been stepping it up as of lately on Nuke. He was playing super well. That entry right there, that is the defining factor in this round. That is the reason why FaZe Clan even has a chance of picking it up, now making it 4 0. Another big missed opportunity by Gartz. And then at what point, Blur, do you start to worry for the Swedish own squad? Now. <laughs> start to worry right now. <laughs> this is where you know things can spiral out of control. Look at the money. Look at the money on the side of phase already. 4-0 up. And you have Bimas and Brokey on 7 and 8K. Nico and Rain on $5,000. That's already starting to spiral out of control. And this is just the upgrade of pistols coming in for the side of Gartz. And Bimas being the... Being the kind of like the the passive lurk, he's just holding the flanks, making sure no one's pushing in. And if he starts to go off, pop off in confidence, pimp, then like this is a dangerous looking face right now. Cold jumping up catches Zen. It's all in crystal, and he's gonna meet his maker. 5-0 for phase, a flawless round in that anti-eco. And now gods and this buy is gonna be coming in. I would love to see attack timeout right now for Devil Walk to talk things through before they go for this, but I think they already have a plan in mind. I think you're right. At least they should have a plan in mind. And I think we once again have to look towards the new Danish addition to this guts and Rasta Fali. He was playing so, so well in the Road to Rio tournament just a few weeks ago with Code Making Flames. Now made the switch into guts and so far hasn't been the best debut for him. Of course, going up against Space Clan is in your very first match with a new squad. That's not easy. Bimas as well. He's going to burn to death right here. That's not lucky for the new player right here. And I guess the rookies are 
are getting a taste of what it's like being a real professional dashlade, at least on this level. Sometimes you gotta be ready for a lot of stuff. Face claim once again, they wanna explode in towards this bomb side. Shituko getting caught out with a smoke. Stays alive. Nope. Goes down to Cold Zero. Sin as well. Rain takes him out, and it's the pace coming out of face claim right now. No matter where they go, no matter how fast they do it, it always catches guards and off guard. They got the first kill blow, and then all of a sudden, everything fell apart. Yeah, I mean, what do you say about that? I mean, look at this. They, they get, like you said, they get Bimus right there. You can see his corpse lying on Banana. And the remaining four players, they get the bomb side. They get four kills. And guess what? They take three points of damage. Let me reiterate that. They take three points of damage on Cold Sera. That's how easily to take the bomb side. And this is a very worrying sign for gods. And yeah, they, they're going to get the, lost most, the max loss bonus coming in into the next round. But... Considering it's going to be just 3,400, it's still not going to be enough for a good buy. We might be seeing a few upgraded pistols and Kevlar, a little bit of utility, and they're going to try and work around this Madden's M4. But it's already starting to crumble here. The CD side for Gods and 6 0 up for FaZe. And uh, this take from FaZe, this is just clinical. It's, 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 like, it's like a heated, uh, a, a, I don't know, a katana through butter. Just like easily just cleaving open that A bomb site. It's starting to look like the face claim we knew back in 2017, at least in, in 2018 as well, when they were having the, the big period where everyone was afraid of playing face claim. The individual skill back when Kerrigan was on the lineup, Nico playing well, it's just a, a hard machine to stop, dare I say it. And the pace they're putting on right now, it's, it's incredible tough for Gatson to deal with it. A new roster, as we talked about, Farley haven't had much of a success, but it's not his fault. It's more the team that's not able to deal with it. Cold Zero fighting another frag towards send this round. Should be relatively easy though. Not a lot invested by Gartzen. And as we can see, Farley goes down as well. Placing on an, you know, a legendary 007, 007. I mean, maybe it's a little bit rough to point out right here, but it's fun still, isn't it? Yeah, for all I mean, welcome to the big leagues. That's all I can say. Uh, well, <laughs> to be to be to be sure. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he it is his first game. Really can't count uh, first game with his lineup, and he's only really had a taste of the top tier Counter Strike uh, very recently, right? He really hasn't done that much in the past. It's only his recent uh, success in the side of Copenhagen Flames has really put him on the radar for a lot of people. But facing off against a phase like this, who have just thrown, thrown caution to the winds, who are just like steamrolling you right now, that's got to be a scary proposition. I don't really want to point things out. Hopefully, he does wake up. But bear in mind, even Madden and, and Frolic, both of them have yet to get off uh, a single kill yet. And ironically, you can see uh, our man Bimas having a hell of a time already. I think he's sitting around 10 kills already early on. And he already cracked the 20, the 20 figure mark on Nuke. So. Sorry, he's on six kills, but still, like when everyone else is doing the fragging as well, there's so much you can do. I think Bimas is off to a great start. He looked shaky initially. You saw the way he's playing ramp on Nuke initially. He was very tentative, a little scared here and there. But then when he started getting the frags, he just woke on up. That T side was phenomenal. And now he is looking very solid indeed here. He sure is. And maybe about now we get to see the first timeout of the game coming out from Gartzen. We have a little fun fact on the screen, Blur. Gartzen have eight kills. So do Cold Sierra and Rain. That's not a that's, great statistic uh, right there. Yeah, that's uh, that's rough to see, isn't it? Oh. It is. What, what do they have to do, right? Because it feels like, to me, it feels like Guts and they are, are just getting overwhelmed by the pace coming out of face clan. So how do you deal with that? Well, you use all your utility, all your smokes, all your grenades in the beginning of the rounds, and then you'll just have to bank on the fact that you can hold them off until the fact that it comes in and execute. But it doesn't seem like they have the confidence in that. So they're still trying to fight towards banana. They're still trying to fight towards middle. Do you think that's the right approach by Gatsen, or do they have to take a step back and just make sure not to get overrun? I, I think I feel like they, they could do a little bit of regression, like you know, they go for the initial deals, the force phase to expend a little bit of utility, right? Don't use too much of your own as well. This is good, but that nade, a chunky nade on the crystal. So that smoke's gonna keep them at bay for a while. Now we have control of banana, and this is what phase is so good at the, the, the pace being set. Look at where Rain is. He can catch Zen off guard, and gonna be Zen though peeking in, right eye peek coming in favorably for Zen. It's much better for them. They get the opening pick, but we've seen what happened earlier. When they got the opening kill, it still got overrun. This is good from Godsend, though. They have banana control. They have four players towards the A-bombs. That heavy presence towards brackets as well. And now face with a minute on the clock, they have to fight for a little bit more real estate. And we can see that happening. They're slowly trying to reclaim banana. What I would love to see right now, Pimp, is 
Crystal and and uh, Madden working in tandem and trying to re-aggress towards uh, Banana and prop, potentially try to get a pick. Unfortunately, I say that, and you were right. They have no utility remaining on the B-bombs and not even a single flashbang to work with. So now they have to sit on the sides and hope their crossfires work out. And that's where phase, they, they thrive in those scenarios. They, they should, right? But as I said, that's the direct consequence of using all your utility in the beginning. And that's the question I tried to pose to you. Do you think that's a good idea? By the looks of it so far, they are in a prime position to win the first round of the half. Farley with the AWP now, maybe he can get the first kill. We'll have to wait and see. There's only 15 seconds left. The flash comes out. It's going to be an explosion out of AFs. We don't get to see it right here. Farley gets a kill towards middle. Nico finds one towards Stiku as well. And then looks like the bomb is going down right here from face clan and we now have ourselves a two versus four a smoke in the hands of nico he can smoke off towards arch he will do that and then it's up to brokey and him to see if they can find the kills four versus two guts and they haven't had a better chance to win around so far yeah this is the best opportunity i've had in forever and it's all going to come down. Again, it's bro It's going to be Nico and Brokey. These two have been so phenomenal together. Brokey with the off looking towards Library, but now it's all on him. And this is a roster, especially when AWP is going to switch to the Deagle, though. And he's going to try and catch Manon dropping down mid air. But Gotham, they finally get around on board to pick up the AWP as well. And more importantly, they keep four players alive, Pimp. Now. Oof, that was a little close to comfort, but now they can swing a couple of rounds together without hemorrhaging too many players. We could potentially, now this is me being very optimistic, but we could mm. potentially still have a game on our hands. Hopefully, hopefully we got our game on our hands. I think FaZe so far have been playing some Stella Counter-Strike. They're picking up the pace again. We saw it on Nuke. It worked out in the end on the T side. Got the W and now coming into Inferno. It's just been super solid from FaZe Clan, both on an individual level, but also the way they're approaching the game as a team. Everyone seems to be on board that they need to play aggressive. So does Gatsen though. Bali and Stuku combining for an aggressive down towards middle. Didn't work out. Bimas as well, ready forward and he gets his seventh kill in the round so definitely not the start guys and would hope for some more aggression towards banana can't find that kill either boomers as well just punishing guards and left right and center right now he's been super well playing today so far i think he can be proud of his debut nine rounds into this inferno game as well refract for maiden gives them maybe a bit of a chance to get back inside this round but with 43 hp three men against four it looks already now super, super rough for Gatson. Does indeed. And this is the this is the heartbreaker, right? You win in such a crucial round, you keep four players alive, you treat two AWPs as well. And now you're a man down. Frolic and Madden and Zen. You have so much work to do. Madden with a crucial kill on the BMAX. On the BMAS. Almost called him BMAX there. And now <laughs> Cold Zera. If you can find Farley, this is the round done. It's all about timing. It's all about what's going to work. And that Colter hasn't made a sound yet. It's slowly going to be falling, but he's running away now. And I think Farley might have heard a couple of footsteps. And that might be sending Madden over towards that B bomb side. If Zen gets taken down, this could be it. But they might not be expecting him to be holding this angle. He can easily find a couple of kills. Finds one, looking for more. And it's going to be Madden, in fact, who gets the kill onto Nico, leaving it all unbroken. Tech nine in hand. He gets a dink in. He gets the kill. 18 seconds on the clock. Bomb dropped. He still has to pick that one up. He's going in for the kill. All bound. He's looking for the frag. 13 seconds. But in the smoke, Madden's going to no scope him. And that's going to be Godson winning the round. That looked very scary, Pim. But somehow they hold on. Yeah, a great start by Bimas towards middle and also towards Banana, punishing both the aggressive, aggressive players, sorry, coming in from Gatsen. Madden though, finding kills with his AWP, a four kill in the round. You get to see all of them right here. That was well played by him. And as you said, that's all it takes, a few rounds in a row, and all of a sudden you can start to believe that Gatsen can fight their way back into this game. It is Inferno, it is the CT side they're playing right now. It's not an easy side, not an easy map, especially not as a new team, but they can get away with six, maybe seven rounds. I think we have a 50-50 game on our hands. Nico getting caught off guard right here by Crystal. And that is exactly what we need to see. The opening duels is starting to go the way of Gartzen, and that's going to put on some extra pressure towards face clan. Yeah, it's a little late, but, well, better late than never, as uh, the old adage goes. And FaZe now, opting to pressure towards the apartments area. They have four players from Gartzen here. Uh, it's an interesting decision by Gotten, if you ask me, Pim. They have the one player towards B that's Crystal, and he's playing all the way. Oh, that's brilliant. That is just brilliant. The bait jump from BMAS and Brokey. He's not going to miss those. 
Oh man, if I'm mad and I'm feeling frustrated and angry right now, Sticko not able to get the trade and it's gonna be falling on back. Lovely stuff, but I love his reaggression from Frawling. No. He misses it. He spots too many players. He finds one, but broke him in a trade. But Zen with the double trade in return, and all of a sudden it's turned on its head and it's in the hands of Cold Zera in a one v three. Trying to get out of apartments it didn't work out. Sin finds his third kill in the round, and what a hold that was from the Finnish player. Fadi a little bit unlucky with that first shot. Did some good damage control, got the second one, and allowed for Sen to get these two kills. Right here, you see it. Fantastically done by the Finnish player from Gartsend. And that's three rounds in a row now from Gartsend. And again, at what point do we think that Face Clan needs to take a timeout? And if, if not to, to slow down the pace, at least to maybe stop the momentum coming in from Gartsend, as we see Fali being taken down to 70 HP by his teammate. Not the greatest start for him right here. He's having a, a rough time right now. Oh, Goes no, down he as well towards Banana. <laughs> Crystal finds the refresh towards Nico, finds another one on Rain. German in-game leader has been super well playing towards Banana so far in this game. Starting to find some success two rounds in a row now, and maybe this is where FaZe Clan needs to slow down a little bit. The pace is not working, it's not surprising anymore. So what's plan B? What's the next step? Plan B is, uh, well, from what we've seen from FaZe, is continue to hold W and kill everyone in their path, right? That was a great hold from uh, Crystal, like you pointed out, a German in-game leader. And speaking of Germans, and... Uh, nationalities i think we have 10 nationalities in the server right now that's that's pretty cool yeah we have 10 nationalities and we counted two coaches we have 12 of them in the server at the moment which is uh it's wild it's truly globally offensive it is truly global offensive and it's the new era of counter-strike it started roughly five six years ago with the first international teams and that was actually faced back then called g2 if i'm not mistaken or something along those lines kinkwin i can't remember it and now they became the face clan mouse sports another team that is doing well internationally speaking <laughs> player was not doing too well right here that's maiden i'm oh, madden not sure why he wanted to go for that peak Great kill though by Bimas. He's been having a strong T side so far on Inferno. Now face clan, they're regrouping back towards the B bomb side. Only one player left defending. The question is, is that going to be enough? Crystal has had a good round so far. The rotations are slowly but surely coming in from Godson, but I don't think they'll be there in time. Crystal sitting on the bomb side. He has to get at least one kill in order to make it possible for his teammates to refrag right here. Stuko going for the duel. Oh no. Crystal going down to Cold Zero. And now, what was looking like a round that was going in the favor of Godson all of a sudden looks super, super rough. A kit on both Sen and Crystal's hands, so it's Duco, but they have to find three kills and defuse the bomb. I felt like Chris, uh, Crystal didn't have to peek there. Stuko was doing a great job playing distraction, you know, and they, all the attention and were on him. He could, they could, he could prevent the bomb from getting planted, but he peeks, he gets taken down, and now it's going to come down to Zen. He finds one trade, comes in the form of the Beamass, and it's all on Stiko. Colter is going to deny him. Phase, they get to eight rounds, and more importantly, the money. Um, it's not terrible for Godsend. I, I do believe one of the players can get dropped, but after this fight, they're going to be pretty much almost broke, him, and that's going to, if they lose this round, the, the upcoming round, that's going allow FaZe to go on another tear and get to potentially even 11 to 12 rounds. It's it's nuke all over again pretty much. It is. Uh, that being said though, FaZe Clan do not have a lot of money in the bank either. If they do lose this round, they can potentially buy depending on how the round plays out, bomb plants and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter though, because Maiden, he's gonna be aggressive towards Banana. Find two kills, one on Nico, one on Bumas. And there we go. Great start by him. We saw it on nuke as well. All of a sudden, he just stepped it up, took two entry kills and Single-handedly one around for Godson. Good to see he's still got it in him. A bit unfortunate for Bumas. I was just about to say he's been playing so well so far. Maiden Ooh. goes for the fourth kill as well. Does he get an ace? No. Cold Zero says no. Denies him the ace, but that was a very well-played round by Maiden. Cold Zero, one versus four. We've seen him done it before, Blur, but let's be honest, most likely not going to happen this time around. Yeah, not going to happen at all. We see Sticker already pushing up towards uh, the that. drains. No, that's not gonna happen, Pim. Let's be real here. Okay. Okay. There okay. we go. Uh, but yeah, Madden, great hole from M4K. I, I kind of wish he even got that ace. That could have definitely helped his morale a little bit. He's been struggling, especially towards that archery yeah. area. And look but, at the money uh, now from Face Clan, right? They don't have enough to buy up if they want to go for a full buy. Three of the players have enough money, two of them don't. So, as you were pointing out so correctly just before, had Guts and lost that round, it would have been the different way. But now that Face didn't win, they are starting to struggle with the money. But that is also part of the story in this game. That is the first, they are say, eco Face. Clan is having 12 rounds into the game, so they've been in pretty much money control throughout the entire game so far. Oh, yeah, 100%. And uh, I do agree with you. Like, you know, phase the money not looking great. I like what they've done. They haven't gone for the full commit, they've just gone gone for the upgraded pistols, you know, a little couple of smokes, a flashbang. 
and they seem like they're heading towards a bomb site where we do see the two cities rotating over are they going to reach here in time is the question crystal perfectly time smoke keeping them at bay but it's completely blinded and it's going to be off with his head a french revolution all over again as rain is going to decapitate him sticko replies back with a nade of his own cold there are barely alive internally bleeding out at six hp rain looking for more but sticko and zen they're going to stem the bleeding for now and it's all on nico and cold there to somehow make something happen and that looks very unlikely then. It's so good to see Gatsen showing some resilience, showing Face Clan that despite them being run over in the first beginning of this half, they are standing tall still. They're making a fight. And now Nico, of course, one of the best players in the world with the Desert Eagle in hand. We've seen him done crazy stuff before, but this time around, nothing is going his way. Another nice round by Gatsen, putting the score to 8-5. to five. We still haven't seen a timeout coming out from Face Clan, so they must feel relatively confident in the game plan still, but... Do you think that's enough? Eight rounds on the T side on Inferno with a new play under Rasta. Is, is that going to be enough for Face Clan or are they looking towards nine or ten? Oh, yeah, they're obviously looking for more, right? But as we do enter the penultimate round of this first half, they have the full buy coming in as well. And uh, I don't think anyone's going to be echoing into the uh, final round, win or lose here. There's going to be another force buy coming up, even if the uh, gods and winner face wins this round. But yeah, I do agree. I think they'd be more, uh, they'd be even more happy to get a couple more rounds. But even eight rounds, I think they've done their job. I think okay. it's been it's been a great half already from FaZe. But considering the lead they had, Pimp, if they kind of like allow Gotham to kind of come back into this one. It's going to be very rough indeed, but those two kills are massive. And now it's all on Sticko. One, V, three, all alone in the bomb side. He's going to find one, but he's not spotted out. He's going to do a smart thing. Toss in the nade. And it's going to take a chunk out of Nico. Bomb dropped as well. They got to pick it up. And this is so well played by Sticko, but Rain, his little spider sense tingling, but he's now left in a 1v2. The Norwegian player will have to do it all by himself. Not aware there's a player towards Arch, or is he? Checking towards CT spawn, he could catch a player right here, and he does so. Nice by Rain. Puts it in on one versus one. There's a player towards middle. I don't think he knows where he is, and now he does. Stuko goes for the duel, doesn't get the kill. Rain charging in and fights oh. the kill. An amazing clutch coming out from the Norwegian player. I gotta say, guys, in rounds like these, you cannot give them up. Of course, it is so very well played by Rain, but you're in a prime position to almost make the game even, and you give up what essentially is a one versus three to Rain. Nicely done by him, though, going for the duel, showing no remorse whatsoever, full of confidence, getting the ninth round on the board and putting the money on Gatsen in the bonkers. Not looking good here for Gatsen. Still an AWP on Farley, but two players will have to do with a Beagle. Aggressive towards middle again. It didn't work out the last time for Stigl. Does it now? Yes, finds the first kill. Gets instantly tricked by right, Broki, and we got status quo four versus four. This game is hectic. This game is all over the place. Indeed it is, and I love the pace being set by FaZe here. They know where the AWP is, and it's going to be on Farlick. He finds a nice little flick on Drew Rain, and now they're trying to pressure him. Backup has arrived, though. Three players now on the bomb side. Now, if Brokey gets the kill onto Crystal, they're going to be heading over to the B bomb side. Nico's going to find one. Farlick's still alive with the AWP. He knows where the player is, right? on the smoke, it's Nico, the veteran, hunting down the player. Brokey, if he can find Crystal, this could be massive. He's looking for him. He sniffs him out, but he's not able to find him yet. Still plenty of time to work around here for Nico. Heading down towards middle, well aware that Crystal could be sitting right here. Finds the kill as well. Nice headshot by Nico. That's going to open up the round one more time. 50 seconds left. Sen with an M4, Farley with an AWP, and they're just starting to split up. You can see on the minimap right here that they're not playing it together, and that could potentially be dangerous, but at this point, you've got to gamble. Sen had a great half so far. Face Clan moving in towards this B bomb site. Does not find the first kill. Goes down to Broken. Now Farley has to retake the bomb site. Does not have a kit in hand. Do not have any sort of utility left in the bank. All he has is armor, AWP, and a knife. Question is, is that going to be enough against Brokey and Nico? I doubt it, but now will be the time to come alive for the Danish player who's had a rough start to his guts and career. Yeah, I mean, clutch a kick, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think this one's going to happen here. And now, this will be do or die time phase. They ended up winning the first map on Nuke. If they get six more rounds in this game, it will be game over. They will walk away with victory. Godsend moving over to the T side. They have to make a comeback. That, I would say, at the time being, is highly unlikely. Face Clan is playing some solid Counter-Strike. Well, let's see how this pistol is going to pan out. Blur, take it away. Yeah, well, Brokey and Nico now going with the utility buy, taking one for the team. 
each his smoke and a couple of flashes broke you with a kid. That is something which Gotham didn't have earlier, if I'm not mistaken, which uh, was why they lost that uh, the their pistol round. And on the side of Godsend, a bit of utility in the hands of Crystal, a Molotov and a smoke, that's about it. A couple of decoys, maybe they're going to try and fool some fool the, fool the players in the face side with those, but I don't think that's going to be really happening here. We do, they are setting up. I'm seeing a couple of decoys here, and that's uh, not going to make phase budge from the positions. It is going to be a Nico and Rain, and Rain has been phenomenal in the pistol so far, Pimp. Uh, maybe if they walk on in. This could be an absolute slaughter here. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. There's still 50 seconds left in the round. Looks like it's going to be this execute. Nico standing in a good position, though. If he can find the first one, cannot quite connect it with the USP. Has a flash, goes in, Rain finds one. Can he find more? He cannot. Now it's up to Nico to defend the bomb site. Has to get more than one, I'd say. If you want to get successful out of this Ooh. one, finally gets a nice kill with the Glocks. Finally stepping it up, and now it's a three versus four retake. Brokey, the only player with a kit available attached to his name. He's going to be vital in this retake, but seems highly unlikely that FaZe can walk in and win this one. Cold Zero, though, has had a strong game so far, strong series overall. It's going to be much needed as there's only two players left. Yeah, especially with uh, yeah, Bimus getting dropped there. I think there should be the call for the save. But Cold Zera is not quite done yet. He wants to pad the stats a little bit more, getting take down to one point of health. And he will try to escape his bro key, just sniping everyone down with a P2K. But in the end, Farlig is there to clutch, it, clutch that one out, although it was a little bit too late for FaZe. Anyway, for Godsnet, finally, Pimp, something going their way. They win the pistol. Very convincing take coming out from them. Unfortunately, Nico not able to get any kill. If he got the one frag there, I felt that retake could have been are much more feasible for phase plan. But of course, the force is going to be coming in for phase. We have the scout in the hands of Brokey. Deagles all around on the side of uh, phase clan. And a uh, number of smokes as well. Five smokes and eight in the flashbang. No kits for any of the other players. And for Godsend, of course, it's going to be the Mac 10s, the Galil, and the Soul. Ultimat Kalashnikov in the hands of Farlik, of all people. Yeah, that's a great round. That's a good nade by Rain, though. Doing a lot of damage towards the Godsend players. Question is, are they going to go for the same strat as phase? Just Running in towards the bomb side, they are. They're gonna be successful with it as well. So were facing the first half, and Nico cannot find anything through the smoke. Or can he? Failed to smoke towards CT spawn, left the gap open, but none of the players are exposing themselves, unfortunately. That's gonna be a say round here for face game. Probably the smart decision considering they invested a lot into this round. Rain started off well with a good grenade towards Banana, but couldn't follow it up with a kill. And Gatson, they're trying to, to steal off a. A uh, page from the FaZe Clan playbook, just being super fast, super aggressive, and just basically bulldozing their way in towards the bomb side of B. Good start for them, and it's very important they convert this round after winning the pistol. All of a sudden, Blur, we have a game on our hand. I'm going to play Devil's Advocate, and I see a little too early, if you ask me, because, okay. yeah, they, they win the pistol round, and I like this from them, the aggression, giving FaZe a taste of their own medicine, and for FaZe, smart call from them, they want to save those, uh, the Kevlar and the Deagles and whatnot, so that means Godson, they're not going to be expecting a full eco now, right? They have to take this one a little bit more safe as well, so yeah, they get to eight rounds, and then FaZe have the buy, and uh, call me a naysayer, call me a negative Nancy pair, but I feel like FaZe is just going to continue what they've been doing so far on both Nuke and on the T side here. We're just going to kind of like steamroll gods and just kind of suffocate them on the CD side. But still, that remains to be seen. That's just me hypothesizing how it's going to play out. We still have to see how it's going to really play out, though. Yeah, and I, I definitely follow the line of thought, but problem is that Inferno is not really a map that allows for that kind of aggression on the CT side. If you get shut down towards Banana or in middle, well, you can't really be aggressive anywhere else. So maybe FaZe Clan will have to play defensively at some point, and that's when we have to test whether this new iteration of FaZe are also able to do that. That being said, though, of course, we'll have to wait and see till the first real buy round comes in. Godsend have decided to slow down the pace, slowly but surely, taking some map control, making sure not to take any unnecessary duels or any high risk right here. They are well aware that FaZe Clan is still alive with four players from the last round of three players, that is a scout and three players with armor. That can be dangerous, especially when you have Nico on a Deagle finding the first frag towards Crystal. And I'm not sure why Crystal wanted to go in there by himself. There was no potential refrag at all from his teammate right there in that position, and now Nico Defending the B bomb side alone, but we've seen him done that before. Two players are moving in. Nico going for the second one. Can't quite connect it. Finally takes him down and what for a moment looked a bit dangerous. Stabilized real quick for Godsend. In prime position to take that eighth round of the game. Bomb has been 
Yep, yeah, and looking very, very, very confident indeed for now. But still, like I said, early days, Madden. A little careful there. Nice little flashback with Pico, the savior, as Cold Zera doesn't go down without a fight. A couple of shots can be ringing out, and to be honest with gods, and this is just the SMGs to be lost, right? They still have the ultimates retained from the previous round. Cold Zera still being quite a problem indeed. Finally, he will fall. And there's money in the bank for the SMG carriers, and that should be the round here. You're going to get to round number eight. And for gods, and this is a real test. We're going to be seeing the buys come. The buy coming in from, from the side of phase. We're definitely going to be seeing Brokey with the AWP, the rifles, and all these players. Now, what I'm curious to see, we saw where Bimas was playing for, uh, Bimas was playing for uh, for phase on the CD side of Nuke. Pim. Mm. He was playing the all of the role towards the ramp area. What do you think he's going to be doing on Inferno this time around? Well, that's a good question. I would assume with the limited time they've had to practice that he'll have to take over all of Master's role as we get to see the Deagle action in this game transpire. That was nice kills by both Nico and Cold Zero, but wasn't enough. You're right, it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to be used on this CT side. But now it looks like he's heading over towards the A bomb side, and that's kind of what we expected, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, might as well. You know, you, don't, you really haven't had the time to really work with him, you know, build around him. So right now, just going to play with what's working for you and force him to play the, uh, the role that you've assigned him. And to be very honest, I think he has... So far, past with flying, flying colors so far, he's been looking very solid indeed. He sure and, has. Uh, I completely agree with that. There's no doubt about that. The problem for Gatson in this round, just to nerd it out a little bit with you guys, is the fact that they've had to play with the Mac 10 and the Galil. Of course, you do not want to upgrade from those weapons in order to keep money in the bank, should you lose the round. But when you look at the two buys isolated, Face Clan is having a much stronger buy this round. And AWP and 4 m force going, going up against, sorry, a Galil, a Mac 10, and two AKs as well as an AWP isolated. Looking at the two buys, Face Clan is in a much stronger position. They are, but they're slowly relinquishing a lot of map control. Now, Crystal here, the moment he gets taken down, the moment Nico realizes no one there, it's going to be huge. But Cold Zera finding Zen, that's going to call for the play here. And if both of them get taken down, it's going to be rough, but Nico's going to find Crystal, and he's, the information conveyed. They haven't dropped on down, and it's going to be Madden who's going to actually get the kill. If he won't be expecting rain, is he? He's going to clear it out, though. That's a massive double kill from Madden. I know Cold Zera's nearby, but it's so very low, and it's oh. a brilliant flash bag at Madden. He even has time to turn back around, switch over to the Deagle, and catches Cold, dabbing away to glory and it's now Bimas and Brokey the two youngsters on the face side and I think they're just gonna call this one a day and just give this round up and that's gonna sting a little bit in the face clan camp that was a nice setup towards banana nicely done by Nico getting the first frag also at least selling the fake in the beginning but Maiden man he just had that one under control maybe that's some preparation maybe that's just some insane sixth sense from the player but he knew exactly where to look and he did it Open up the round completely, and then I will say Cold Zero a little bit unlucky towards CT spawn. That flash was not really intended towards Cold Zero. I don't think he was aware that he was that close up, but as soon as he saw him standing right there holding his arm in front of his eyes, Maiden thought to himself, why not get a third kill and win the round? Well done by him, well done by Gatson putting a ninth round to the game. You did not want to say it before, Blur, but I think we do have a game on our hand now. Now I agree. Now I agree with you. One run away from tying things up. And Look at this that right was there. this was surprising from Rain though. Was he so certain that Madden wasn't gonna be checking yeah, him, right? Must have been the case. That, I really felt they would be holding that angle together, you know, just hold the both the players hold the line, the trade happens immediately, and then a perfect flashbang. I just think kind of feel like he threw a Hail Mary flash in Cold Zero, unfortunately, completely blinded. Huge, huge round from Madden, who had a pretty rough CD side, mind you, with an AWP of his, but uh, looking pretty good here on the T side of the AK-47. However, for the side of phase, they do have the utility to work with. Rain looking hungry, but he's going to get caught on out. Crystal, now it's his turn to shine, finds two kills, and now it's all on Brokey, and he's getting hounded back by the side of Gotham. He's got a smoke to keep him at bay for now, but look at Crystal, continuing to hold W, just pushing further. Brokey, he's just going to relinquish the B side. The call's been made. They're like, just hold on to your gun. There's a hope going for this, and God sent Pimp out of nowhere. They've come alive, and uh, they've basically given FaZe a taste of their own bitter medicine. Yeah, this was exactly what I feared when we went into the CT side. You said it yourself, right? You expected FaZe then to just pump it out there and keep the pace up. But when you play the CT side of Inferno, if you're met by aggression, your own aggression will most often... You know, not be as successful as it can be on other maps, let's be honest. Inferno is a map where it's super, super tough to be aggressive on the CT side. There's a 
very few limited options where you can do it and how you can do it. Banana, of course, is one of the areas, and as you saw right here, Crystal was well aware. And at some point, I think Face Clan will have to realize that they just have to sit back exactly like Gatsen did in the first half and then play it defensively. And that's where I want to see Face Clan if they have that second dimension to them. We know them to be a strong team, especially when they're playing fast, especially when they're playing aggressive Counter Strike. But if they can also master sitting back and being a bit more defensive and playing, you know, crossfires and playing as a team. That's when we get to see Face Clan up on the very highest level of Counter Strike. So, I guess that will have to be the adaptation for them coming in. I would be very surprised if we're not going to see a more defensively playing Face Clan in the upcoming round. That being said, though, Garten keep on going, keep on putting on the pressure. We now evened out the game 10 to 10, won five in a row, and found Face Clan. If and I'm the fans out there sitting in the Twitch chat, I would be a bit scared that we may have a game on our hand. Yeah, definitely five in a row. I haven't dropped one yet. Albeit, uh, three of the rounds they won were the pistol and two anti-eco, so you do have to take that with, uh, with a little bit of pinch of salt. Let's see what they have in store for us here. This B bomb side has been a problem for FaZe. I mean, so many times they've had the advantage, they had three players even at one point in time, but still got them able to hammer their way home. That's a chunky name. That is massive. Zen down to 49, stick with 58. It's very good early damage being dished out by Nico and Rain. And it's gonna be a faster hit. This is pretty much a phase recreated, but this time around, Nico with the spray finds two. He's gonna push on out further, looking for more, getting a little too over eager, perhaps. And he's gonna get taken down. It's all in rain right now, and they are very aware of his position, Pimp. They have an inkling where he might be, and he's getting hounded. Needs to raffle off a shot. Oh. Great little flick there to find Mad Madden. I thought it was done for, but he finds the kill, bomb goes down, at least FaZe have the man advantage as they go in for this retake. Ah, such a nice kill from Rain, giving them a much better chance of being successful with this retake. That being said though, Farley in a good position right now. Question is, does he have the balls in order to stay here, right? He should know that it could be pressure coming on from Banana. At some point, he'll have to fall back, and I think that's exactly what Broke is aware of. The flash coming in from the teammate, nicely done by him, and now the retake will come in in full force. Half of the bomb timer has already ticked down. They have to be fast now. They have to go in. Farley cannot connect the first one. Stuko in a one versus a three. Finds the first one. Cannot find Cold Sierra. Question is, do they have a kit? They do. Cold Sierra is going to defuse the bomb. It's going to be close, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, he just Ooh. about got it right there for Cold Sierra. That was super, super close. Nice retake by Face Clan. Nicely done. Good flashes for each other, but that was down to the narrow. I don't think there was much more than 0 0.01 second left on that bomb. I don't even know how the hell they managed to get the defuse. That was so very close. I thought it was uh, it was a donezo. I thought he he didn't get the defuse. But phase, skin of the teeth, they do survive. Eleven to ten now. Super expensive round for them, but we got to see exactly what we we're talking about before, Blue. The fact that they had to sit back. Nico had to do a defensive role to on towards that B bomb side. Was very successful with it. Finding two kills with the M4. This time around, though, it's gonna try with AWP. Gets flashed out, falls back. Nicely done by BMS. Finding a kill towards Stuku in middle. Brokey. Ready and waiting for another guy in middle. Also ready for number two. Question is, can he get away now? Good flash from his teammate. Still haven't found a way. Out of here, now he does, and there we go. A five versus three for face clan. Great opening right here, successful with the aggression. Yeah, especially Brokey surviving there is massive, right? A little unfortunate the trade didn't take place then as well. Unfortunate timing that Nate almost gets to kill his cold Zera. Just massive cojones on the man to go for the white peak, finds Zen, and with that, Frolic and Crystal. And yes, they have a lot of money, Pim. They have strongest five rounds in a row, and many of those rounds were very convincing as well, so they're looking pretty good. But. Face Clan, have they finally woken up is a question here. If they can win this one without taking any more casualties, that's massive. They can start to slowly start to build up a little bit of an economy here. But now Crystal and Fall, the in-game leader, the latest addition to this team. What could they possibly do in this scenario? 30 seconds, not much time to work with, no map control whatsoever. And I think they've gone for the right call here. They're just going to hold on to these guns for the next round. And that is Counter-Strike right here for you. If you're sitting out there on the Twitch TV channel and you're watching a professional Counter-Strike game for one of the first times in your life, this is how crazy a game can be. We are talking a split second the round before from Cold Zero, getting that bomb defuse and not getting it. The following round, well, they win the aggression, they win the duels, and all of a sudden, face can find themselves in a very comfortable position, putting on 12 rounds to the board and now building up an economy as well. Counter-Strike is a fantastic game in the sense that it always goes back and forth, and it's the smallest details sometimes that determines whether you win 
or you lose. Great job by the two youngsters of face claim. We saw it right here. Bimas and Broki finding the two opening kills for face claim. Now question is, can they continue it? Cold Zero had a strong CT side so far, I'd say. Probably better on the T side, but still more in store for us. Gatsen though, not out of it. Still with a decent economy behind them as well. It looks like they want to go for an aggressive play towards middle. Oh yeah, they are indeed Broki. Getting forced on back, but he's done the damage. Madden very low. I love that from Nico. Just spots the player out. Doesn't really take the fight. He knows Garten are pushing in. They're taking matters into their own hands. <laughs> this is this is so weird. Four CTs, three on the bomb site, and one player Bim as the only man playing towards pit. And and now they're gonna be coming for the hit. They're not gonna be expecting this. Broke is gonna find one, and they're getting slaughtered here. But Coldzera on the side, they have no idea. They're not gonna be expecting another player. Look at the trigger discipline from Coldzera. This is gone. Like one looking for more, no. but Frolic is gonna get the kill. They still know where Bimas is. I really thought Cole would get both the frags there, Pim. Unfortunately, just finds the one, and now it's a two v two post match. Fali and Stuko combining for a kill each, winning that round, Cold Zero. You said it, he was playing that perfectly fine, but you gotta get a lot of credit to Fali right here. Getting that kill with the Tech 9 on towards Cold Zero. Look at that, just an instant headshot. And also finishing up the round. He started out as James Bunt in this game. He was 0 0 7. Classic 007, and now he's finding himself on 12 to 12. He's stepping it up and he's showing his worth. That is exactly why Gatson spent a lot of money buying out this Danish youngster from Copenhagen Flames. Face plane still have the money to buy right here. Once again, wins out the duel towards Banana. This kid is on fire right now. And Blur looks like... Oh, holy moly. <laughs> he's all over the place right now. <laughs> looks like he's ready to play. Face plane down four versus five. This is not looking good anymore. If they lose this one, they lose money control. Gatsen will draw up the game. And at that point, I'd even say Gatsen are favorites to win Inferno. How is Nico alive? How, how is he still alive? Two HP. At this point, I, I found Nico. I'm just running back, not even on the slide. Like I head to construction, just pray to whatever gods I believe in that I stop getting harassed. He's got wall bag, Molotov, naded, and he's now in two HP. And I agree with you, gods. Then they're not gonna just go down here without a fight. They want to take it to map number three, which I do believe is gonna be dust two. And at least based off what we've seen so far here. I, I believe Dust2 is going to get very messy indeed. What is going on? Range is relinquishing the B bombs. Are they going for the save already? Looks like they are. They're just like going for the A stack and... Yeah, Range probably is going to go for a spray through the smoke. Try to hopefully find a frag. If he doesn't, that's going to be the call for the save. They're going to save the four rifles. And I do believe that's the right call, Pimp. That is, Nico and 2HP as well. That's a great call. And again, a lot of players out there, a lot of new guys to the stream may think to themselves, hey, why, why, why are they saving in four versus five? It's a smart decision when you look at the economy. Next round, they cannot afford anything if they don't save this one. If they save all four players, though, they're going into the next round with a full buy once again. So they're basically giving themselves another chance of winning the buy round, winning the economy game. The only problem when you make a decision like this is that you allow Gatson to survive five player, five players, sorry, which builds up their economy even further. So it is a, a bit of a, a gamble there, I say it, but it's a smart decision from Face Clan. If you believe that you're the stronger team, if you believe that you need the guns, if you need the utility in order to successfully have a strong CT hold, you take that save, you take that loss, and it's a very mature decision made by Face Clan. I like to see it. They're showing they're not that one dimensional as we always think, right? It's not only about holding the W, rushing around. They have some brains in that team as well. And of course, they do. Some of the greatest players to ever play the game is sitting on that side. So another full buy around 12 to 12 the game is completely even blur if you had to put your money somewhere right now where would you go i look only on this map right now yeah. i'm godson or somehow forcefully changing my mind they, they just build up this this momentum that they're just rolling with and despite a couple of a couple of rounds going the way of phase uh oh cold zero though i say something and he shuts me up two huge kills and look at the damage from dr crystal as well and despite getting the kill in rain he walks and not completely unaware where frolic might be that might have been a crucial mistake it's a 3v3 now nico down to 25 points of health brokey all alone with the op towards that arch area if he gets his kill, it could be big. And that's a bomb down. That is massive. Zen dropping the bomb and dropping the ball as well. This could be the round right here. It could. Brokey, though, in a good position. Bomb is down. A good smoke's come in from Gatsen right here. A great Molotov from BMS again. He may only sit on 13 kills, but they've been super, super impactful. That one right there, that's maybe a... Bit of a heated decision coming out for the duel. Tries to go for the spray through the smoke. Puts down Farley to 17 HP. 
Now he's well aware where he is. He picked up the bomb, but at this point, that doesn't matter. All FaZe Clan have to do is play the bomb start, play the time. Farley should not be able to do anything about this round, especially considering that he has no utility, no Molotov to flush any players out, no smokes to cover any angles. He has to go for the duels. And he's only at 17 HPs. Have a strong, strong T side so far. And that shot unfortunately didn't connect for him. And that puts up Face Clan to 13 rounds. So to the people out there maybe wondering why did Face Clan save the other round? I guess the answer is right here for you. They gave themselves another shot of winning a round, putting on pressure towards Garten, and they were successful winning, especially because of Cold Zero and the aggression down towards me. Oh, will that continue though, right? It's, it's just been so back and forth. At this point, I feel it's almost impossible to call this one. And frankly speaking, Pim, I don't know about you. I want to see Dust 2. I want to see how it's going to play on out. You look at Nuke, you look at you look at uh, Inferno, more tactical maps, but hold on. Chris is playing a game of the floor is Lava, and he will survive at 25 HP. He will make his escape as well. Right before a barrage of nades was being tossed in by FaZe Clan, he could have been caught out there, but he survives on four points. I felt that Nico has aggressed out playing right behind the mini wall. Now Farlik is going to line it up and there left flicks. There we go. Gets rain and now Nico. It's all on him. They know where he is. Tosses the smoke. Not expecting Madden to be so close. This could be the round here. Unless the player they're holding the line. The hero smoke hit his feet. Cold Zara. So unfortunate. He gets the one kill. But that's about it. I think the round's done. FaZe will have to save the, the two players here. Bimas and Brokey hold on to a rifle. They have a little money in the bank. But can they hold on? Because the hunt is already on Sticko, on the Lurk, floating towards the department's area. The thing is, Pim, if both of them survive, both Bimus and Brokey can drop a couple of guns onto Rain and Cold Zera, and Nico can buy for himself. But if one of them die, and I jinxed it completely. Now, Brokey left alone. Oh, this is looking rough indeed. Yeah, you're spot on about the economy. I do think they'll still go for the buy if Brokey is able to save. It'll be one player, maybe playing with an MP9 or something like that. That's a nice shot by Brokey. Giving himself another shot of staying alive. There's going to be pressure, though, from all sorts of angles. You also have to look at the guts and money. They cannot afford to die. Two more players right here. That's going to put on too much pressure on their economy. That's why they're not going for the full hunt right here. Brokey trying to stay alive in the smoke. He's doing it so, so well. And I think he... No, he does not get away with it. And that is a disaster right there. Look at the money. Still, there's a decent amount of loss bonus on the CT side. But if you buy up now, you're also saying to yourself, okay, we buy up, but we're not going to have full utility. So do we take a small buy, you know, maybe an MP9, armor, eagles and stuff, and then make sure you buy up fully next time? I think that's exactly the decision Face Clan is making. But... There we go. Bim is the only one playing a fair mess in this round. The rest of them pistols and armor. So the fact that he didn't survive right there, that changes the outcome of this potential buy in round number 27 completely. This game is super, super fun to watch, Blur. And I definitely do agree with you when you say that you want to see Dust 2, especially between these two teams. Now, Broki aggressive towards middle, trying to lurk through the smoke, doesn't find anything. Counting his lucky stars. Aggression towards Banana. Didn't work out. Maiden finds a kill through the smoke against Nico. He's been super well playing against these smokes. Also on Nuke. He was doing that all the time. Now Rain takes a gamble. Sits in the smoke. Looks like Maiden. He's well aware. Yeah, I think he's got like seven kills already through the smoke. He has just not cared about the smokes whatsoever, right? And... Uh... I agree. I mean, like, yeah, I want to see Dust 2. I really want to see Dust 2 right now, the way this is playing out. Bimas trying to be a little cheeky, holding a little bit off angle, but the double peak comes in. Okay, Cold. Good night, Madden. But it's done his job. It's all on Brokey. Young Brokey on the A bomb site, all by his lonesome. He finds one. Doesn't pick up the AK 47, but he has to reposition himself, and he's getting hounded by the two players pushing in. He gets a tag on the stick but doesn't get the kill, and it's all on Cold to save his AK 47 into the next round. Now, money will be there for FaZe. But the way Gotham's playing at the moment, it, it doesn't look like they're in any danger of stopping anytime soon. They want to take this map. They want to get those 16 rounds and push it to map number, two, map number three. And for FaZe, consider it was a 10-5 half. Pimp, like 10-5 on the T side. And somehow, it slipped out of the fingers. And this game right now is poison and knife's edge. It sure is. Gotham able to survive three players. That's going to be good for their economy. Still, though, haven't really built it up as it's been some relatively close rounds. So if FaZe Clan were able to string not only one, but two rounds together, that would be it for Gatsen. There'll be no more money in the bank, so this game is still super, super close. Only one round between the two teams. And after watching that first half, you saw FaZe Clan up 10 to 5. You were thinking, this is over. There's no way they're going to throw this one away, but 
But face clan, you never know. It's one of the most interesting, one of the most fun teams to watch play Counter-Strike at the moment. So definitely understand why you guys tuned in to watch this one. Still haven't made a single tactical timeout, if I'm not mistaken, throughout this game. And I gotta say that I will allow myself to be a bit critical over. You know, I know Yanko can talk throughout the entire time since it's online, but still take a timeout, break the momentum, talk it all over. Make sure to spend that time. You have four timeouts available, so why not use them? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I, I do believe we should hopefully get Yanko for the for the post-game interview, right? Win or lose, and I'm very definitely curious to hear his thoughts as to why mm. uh, they haven't really gone for any timeouts. But that's neither here nor now. Crystal walking in dry. Here's a drop. It's going to be Nico caught out in the open, but the trade doesn't come in here. He's taking a bit of damage. Rain getting hounded down as well. Both of them on 46 points of health. So much damage being inflicted there by Crystal, the German in-game leader. And with that, Gotten now rotating back towards the mid area where there is a crossbar setup. Cold Zera and Brokey with the AWP holding the line, the final barrier between the A bomb side and Gotten. Cold Zera had a strong night so far. Can he find the first one? He can. Doesn't find the second one. Brokey does though. Finds a kill. Gets back on towards the side. Well played by the youngster on face clan. Smokes himself off. Goes for another oh! kill through the wall. Absolutely fantastic by Brokey. Backup coming in from Bimas, and now it's a one versus two. Stuko has the bomb in hand, has a smoke, puts it down straight away, and the aggression is coming in straight off the bat from Face Clan. Stuko is well aware, though. I think he heard him back to first break as well. Doesn't find Nico, takes him down through the smoke. And as we were talking about, Blur, this game just keeps on delivering. 14 14, all even, and the money is not looking good for Face Clan. This is going to be a scrappy buy. Of course, Nico can drop one, but then I've got to have all the utility they want. That being said, though, if Godsend is losing this round, they will be out of money as well. 14-14, everything is at stake right now, Blur. This game, that's a good one. It's a really good one. Yeah, 14-14. That's what you love to see, right? The AWP will be dropped under Brokey. Yes, give that guy an AWP. The second shot was pure filth. Absolutely grotesque from the man. And despite getting taken down, good trades coming in and face time, they hold on. And Godsend, though, they still have some money in the bank. And I do believe that if they lose this one, they can still eke out a buy. But yeah, it is looking quite grim indeed for the Swedish org at the moment for FaZe. I do agree with you, though. Their their money scenario is even more dire than a side of Godsend. If they lose this one, it could be just Pistol and Armor coming into what could be the final round of the game. And the Nade doing a lot of damage. Perfect flash. My Nico burns mad in the life. It's all in rain right now. He's all alone. There's no one nearby. And he's going to peek or not. He finds Crystal. Bomb drop. Molotov on the bomb as well. He's doing his very best to keep the T's at bay. Tossing in the smoke as well. This is complete chaos now. But the reinforcements have arrived. And this is going to be the final hit. Rain finds another one. But he quickly gets traded by Farley. Cold Sarah in a good position right here. Goes down oh. to Farley. What a shot by the newest addition to the Godson roster. Bringing out the AWP and puts it to the face of Cold Sarah. Unfortunately, he cannot hit the second one. We now have a one versus two again. Stuku, it didn't work out the last time around. You have another shot to make it for Godsend. Waiting for the bomb to be tapped now. Does he go for it? He plays it ice cold or what? Does he go for the duel? He does go for it. Finds the first frag. Well aware the second guy is not defusing. One versus one now. Against Bimas. Only has a Femast. No smoke, no nothing. Doesn't stick it. Has to win out the duel. He cannot find the kill. And that's going to be Stuku winning the round of what? Right here. Loses out of the duel. Is the time for it? No. No. There is not. It's going to be Gatson going up 15 14. Rain did everything he could in his power to win this round for them, even getting a second kill from that position. That was so well played by him. But Farley, with that AWP shot, that completely turned around the tides for this round, allowed Stuka to get in a good position and win a fantastic one versus two. 15 14 blur. And money not looking good for Face Clan. I'm still wondering what, uh, where, uh, I think it was, uh, they must have gone hey, to there, Dad. Hey, a timeout. What you have thought? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, better late than never, right? I I'm still surprised why in that, in that 1v2, yeah, they might have peaked. I don't know why they split apart there. They might as well try the luck, you know, before Sticko to go for the peak, and then, you know, they could have gone for the immediate trade there. But I guess they were still very unsure where Sticko was. So rather they would have cleared out the bomb side before they went for the bomb tap, perhaps. So many ways they could have played their 1v2, but I get the pressure got too much for them. And interesting stat, he has 558 kills in his career before today. That's, uh... That's not much, actually, Pen. It's not a lot. It's less, less than matches I've played, I think. Far less. Yeah. Far less. <laughs> that's, uh, that's crazy. He's doing a good job so far. He's been playing absolutely stellar. I don't think you can blame him for anything. We'll have to see if he has more to say in this game. He is the only player with an M4 enhancer. They're also giving him a lot of responsibility. It's not like he's being told to drop that to Nico or Cold Zero for that matter. 
Cold Water FMS finds the first kill. Nice shots on towards Crystal. There's no refred coming in. I'm not sure why they're so disjointed right now. Another flash comes in, though. Pushes Cold Zero into an unfortunate position. Those are flesh, stays alive, goes for a duel, but goes down to Maiden. Four versus four. Broke him, peering out around the corner. Timing is great. Two double body shots on the Deagle. He doesn't pick up a weapon, though, and that's going to be the call for Godson to go for the hit. They're going to waterfalling out, but Sticko clotheslines Brokey with the AK-47. Are they aware of Vimus's position, though? He's got the M4, he's got the kid, he got a couple of flashes, and they have no idea where he is. He can hear the footsteps, Pimp, and he's going to avoid the flash. Still holding the line, finds one, looking no. for more. Switches to the AK-47 at the worst time possible, and that's the immaturity in the player coming out to Played there, leaving it all in rain in a 1v2 MP9 in hand. He can still clutch his one out. Pim is slowly creeping up. He knows where Fallig is, but Fall 